What's going on everyone? Austin John plays here and today we're going to be going over all three parts of all three quests in order to get yourself the Tingle Armor in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> If you saw my video on how to get the Fierce Deity armor, then you may already be familiar with how this quest starts, or you may have completely overlooked it altogether. Here at the Foothill Stable, just north of the shrine, is going to be the Cephala Lake Cave, where the Fierce Deity quest is going to begin. I have a video on that in case you need it. Boop in the top right. And these two over here, they are going to be up to something. These two were the ones who set you on your way for the Fierce Deity armor, as well as the Ember armor and they're going over more of the Bandit Misko's old manuscripts. Now here's the thing, he's saying, I'll tell you what the manuscript said, but you have to give me 100 rupees. Now, hear me out. You don't have to pay the 100 rupees. You could just go get these pieces of armor, but in order to get the quest, you do have to buy these manuscripts at 100 rupees. And then there's gonna be three different manuscripts that you can go ahead and purchase. I'm gonna go ahead and purchase all of them, including the Twins Manuscript, the Pirate Manuscript, and lastly, the Heroines Manuscript. To start with the Twins Manuscript, in West Nekluda stand twins poised to duel. Each contains a cavern that faces the other. Show the little twins sign to the big twin to open the door to my treasure. Well here in Nekluda you're going to be seeing the dueling peaks and this is the location that they're going to be talking about and if you didn't know the northern peak is the shorter peak, the southern peak is the taller peak. So we're going to go ahead and make our way to this cave, the dueling peaks north cave. If you make your way from the shrine above, okay we're already on the surface. <laughs> I'm never going to get tired of how fast that is to go from the Sky Island and then it's like, you know, 30 feet below you and you're already at Dueling Peak. I love that. Where the shrine used to be on the shorter peak is a Korok puzzle. Excuse me a moment. While you're up here, it might be a smart idea to go ahead and plop down a travel medallion to make getting back up here and finding the other cave a little bit easier. From where that Korok puzzle was, let's just jump off of the cliff and slowly coast our way down. As you start coasting your way down, you're going to notice that there's going to be sort of a land shelf here. And this is exactly where we want to be, because on this first land shelf is going to be a cave entrance. For the record, my altitude right now is 157. So if your altitude is far below or above that, you need to correct it. There's some hard blends in here. They should be fairly easy to take care of. Also up there is going to be a passageway to a cave. You're going to be finding your micable blade gem in there in case you still need it. And as we make our way to the back room, there's going to be absolutely nothing in here. Unless you look up. Looking up here and using bowling pin numbering system, which seems like the best one to use. These are going to be three, five, seven, and nine. Keep in mind, I am facing to the back wall. Now all we need to do is make our way over to the other cave, which is at a much higher altitude. That's the reason I recommended plopping down a travel medallion. Once we're up here, if we look to the Dueling Peaks South Cave, it's gonna be right about here, topography wise. From where I just put that Korok puzzle together and dropped down this travel medallion, you're going to be seeing a land shelf pretty much directly in front of you. This one is much higher up than the first one was. And this is the Dueling Peaks South Cave. We're going to be having a like like inside as well as Misko's treasure banner showing up. And then once we're inside, you're going to once again be seeing pretty much the exact same pattern layout. So using bowling terms, we have one already put down. Number three, we're going to pick this rock up because we don't want it there. Place it right here. Oh, hi, frog. Seven. Sorry, I, I I meant we need to pick up the first rock, not not leave it there. Yeah. Again, one, three, five, seven, nine. That's the pattern. Once we place them all down correctly, you're going to be seeing this door open up, and inside of that is going to be our altar for the tingle shirt. There was once a man who claimed to be the very incarnation of a fairy. He treasured this shirt, and so will you. After all, it's a rather rare find, Kululimpa. And that's the manuscript, Twins Complete. Next is the Pirate Manuscript. A forgotten pirate cavern lurks at the foot of Cape Kales overlooking the Nekluda Sea. The short, shrill song of wind through lips will open the way to my treasure. For this, we're going to need to make our way over to the bottom right, not to Eventide Island, but Cape Kales, which is the high point here. However, we're going to be making our way Oceanside to the Cliff Base Cave. If you decide to make your way from the Sky Island like I did, we don't actually have to land on the peak at all. Instead, we're just going to be making our way down to the ocean level. 
but you definitely want to go as far as possible. There's also going to be some handy building. There's also going to be some handy building materials nearby that we're going to be stopping at, and the building materials are going to be right here, right below where my character's icon is, if you want to use that on your map. And down here, you're going to be finding a whole bunch of driftwood. But most importantly, we're also going to be finding a fan and there's a control stick here. Go ahead and gather all three of these items and build it into a functional raft for yourself. If you want to go ahead and grab a second fan, that way this goes faster, you're more than welcome to. But you should be fine with just one. We're not going very far. From here, all we have to do is go ahead and drive our makeshift boat right around the mountainside. We're going to be finding a large hole over here. And inside of this large hole is, is going to be a giant door. I would like to, for a moment, tell you how many things I tried relating to using Korok fronds and using Tullin and using different wind-based things. I went and got an eight-fold long blade. I attached the Koron frond to the eight-fold long blade and none of that worked. But all you have to do is just whistle for a horse. I also thought I had to do with the stalagmites hanging from the ceiling representing teeth. Nope, just, just whistle. And inside of here, we're going to be finding a pirate's den, which is pretty interesting. But also, you're going to be finding this altar, guarded by this one bow goblin. And inside is not going to be our treasure. Do you know why our treasure is not here? Because those pirates took it. Let's just go ahead and get back on our boat. Make our way over to the ship. Now, if you drive your boat all the way to the ship and then you stand at the very front of your boat, you can go ahead and use a send right through the side of the boat and board which as we can see is going to be two, three stall, which is going to be three stall bow goblins and one stall moblin. Let's go ahead and take out the enemies. That way they aren't going to be bothering us. This guy's also got shock fruit. After all the enemies are taken out, you're going to be seeing a whole bunch of boxes back here. Let's go ahead and smash these up for some arrows. Who doesn't love free arrows? And oh my gosh, inside of here is going to be a chest. I actually didn't know that the chest was here. I just, I just wanted the arrows. And that's going to get us tingles tights. Very nice. And the pirate manuscript complete. Are there any other goodies here? Oh, there's another chest up here at the forward side crow's nest. With a three shot Savage Lionel bow. There you go. There's a place that you can find yourself a Savage Lionel bow if you can't take down Lionels. Nice and easy. The third and final treasure manuscript is going to say statues of the eight heroines reside in the desert, enter the valley carved into Homara's descent, and shine the light of day upon the towering eighth. The path to the treasure will open before you. For me, this was actually the easiest one for me, because if you know where the statue of the eighth heroine is, it's going to be kind of obvious. Also, I knew that that was Homara's descent. So if you're looking at the Gerudo Highlands, it's going to be this last chasm that's sort of an indent to the mountainside. At the very top is going to be this strange shape. That's where you need to go. There's also a shrine located nearby. We're just going to go ahead and go from here. Once you make your way on over here, the only things that you are going to be needing is a way to change the time or a lot of patience. And you're going to need yourself a Zonai mirror. With a flint and piece of wood, let's go ahead and set this to noon. Because the statue of the eighth heroine is inside of a large chasm that's blocked by mountains on either side, it's not going to be getting any sunlight during the morning or the night. The time that it gets the most sun is going to be at direct noon, and it's not direct sunlight. We're now going to be taking that out. Make it face toward you. Stand at the very edge of the hands. Lift it up and hold it far away. Doing this is going to be shining this light back toward you, and you're going to be listening for the sensor going off. And once you hear that it's charged up, the door is going to be opening for you. Let's go ahead and make our way inside. And this is the statue of the eighth heroine cave. Very creative naming. Inside of here, we're going to be finding a lot of Gibdo. Actually, Yonobo should probably be helping out quite a bit for this, shouldn't he? Yonobo, can you can you come down here, buddy? Can you come down here? I need you down here. Uh, you don't even have to fight these guys, just saying. I mean, if you want to, definitely go for it. They have some of the best drops to attach to arrows in the entire game, so 10 out of 10 recommend. After that's all taken care of, let's go ahead and grab this fan that's nice conveniently inside of this pile. Activate the fan. And we're gonna be using this over here toward the altar. That's currently covered in sand. And inside of here is going to be our chest. 
Tingle's Hood. Kalulimpa. And that's going to be the heroine's manuscript complete. Now, the Tingle's outfit cannot be upgraded, and wearing all three pieces is going to give you night speed up one. So, you can use that if you want to go slightly faster, but only at nighttime. Yep, that's that was always the point of this armor. It was never really useful, but it was exclusive to the DLC in Breath of the Wild. So, if you didn't play the DLC, now you can get it for free 99. Anyways, great. Guys, I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turning on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.